Hey y'all, Miles J here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how I like to feminize my face. Step one, have a face. If you don't have a face, it's probably for the best. A lot of people judge people just based off of their facial features alone. So if you have a particular type of face, someone might think you are a particular type of person. It's just a face. So it's already just stressful enough. But you guys already knew that. So Patrick was nice enough to put me on his PR list for one size. So I am going to be using the eyeshadow eyeliners and other things that are in this. Ooh, you can see all the texture and everything. Here we have a mirror. Very big one at that. Love that. I got a big head, girl. I need the space. So we have the Eye Popper Sparkle Vision Eyeshadow right here. So these are liquid shadows, I'm assuming. And then we also have in the red right here, liquid eyeliner pen. And then we have the palette. These two other little babies are typical eyeliners, black and brown. I'm going to try and use the brown for my brows. Actually, speaking of brows, I need to cut these holes real quick. Right now, we're going to be focusing on Skin. I start out with the No Problem Priming Water. It's basically a multi-oil, is what it says on the back. I'm gonna color correct the gray bluish area around my mouth. This helps with my dysphoria a lot. Like, if this beard disappeared tomorrow, I would not be upset. I'd rather be hairless. Ooh, okay, girl, that almost got on my entire sweater. I don't know how these beauty gurus be so bold to be wearing all these nice clothes while they do makeup. Like, I really don't know how y'all do it. So now I'm gonna use my Cover FX powder. This is a little bit on the redder side for me, too. And with this beauty sponge, it's from Dose of Colors. I'm gonna use the flat side. Ooh, this booty blender is really nice. This is my first time using this, by the way. So far, so good. It feels so soft. So this is me pre-powdering, and what this is gonna do is this is gonna smooth out the skin and also set your primer if it's one of those like dewy, oily ones, and just give you something nice to work on top of when you finally add your foundation. If you are suffering from cystic acne, which I have personally been a victim to, I would definitely recommend this step because it's gonna smooth out that dryness around your face. It's also gonna set um, and create a barrier in between that painful layer of skin and the makeup that you're about to put on. You won't have to worry about it breaking up or looking crispy, or you can just avoid the acne area altogether and just not put makeup on it at all. If I have like a really bad acne day and it's like a huge cystic zit, I will try to avoid it. Normally, this is where I would stop if I was just having a casual day out and just wanted to feel like freshened up a little bit, but not go like full, full. I'll just go out looking like this with like a uh, gloss or something like that. You know, but since today is gonna be a full glam day, I'm gonna go in with my Innisfree Foundation Velvet Cover Foundation. This is the last shade in the line in the color N49. So oh, if you darker than me, I'm sorry, sorry. I do love this foundation a lot. It is like the perfect mixture of moisturizing and mattifying. And I apply this on top of the chin area where I color corrected under my chin. I put a little right there. So that's something you really want to look out for in a foundation. It's just like a balance. I like a little mattifying because I'm super oily and a little moisturizing because I'm super oily. So if you're super oily, that means your skin is trying to compensate for the dryness that you're putting her through. You need to get some moisturizer ASAP. Now, if your skin is super dry, that means your skin just doesn't produce oils or a lot of them, so you need to moisturize. In either case, you have to moisturize. Moisturizing is important. You need to do it before you put on your foundation. You, got, you gotta do it. Now, my idea of femininity and feminization of myself has changed over time. When I was in high school, I was like, everything. Very anti-establishment. I mean, I still kind of am. Very rebellious. So when it came down to expressing femininity, I wasn't quite comfortable with doing that and while i talk about that i'm going to move on to concealing i know this isn't a concealer it's a foundation but i use it to conceal because it's like the perfect concealing color for me it's just like just bright enough but with my same undertone you're gonna see the yellow from this really ninth grade i was fully i don't want to say i was fully straight but i was like bye i think is what i came out of or i just didn't come out at all i was just like i'm not it's just like a... <laughs> Mind your business, like leave me alone. That was my energy. So this is Tarte Shape Tape in Mahogany. 
10th grade, I came back with permed hair because I was like, okay, well, let me look at my options. I could be straight, live a lie, and still be suffering and die. Or I could live my truth and still suffer, but know that I was living in my truth and be around people who knew who I really was and would love me for who I am. Either way, I was looking at suffering. Or the third option, I could just kill myself. Girl, what are these options? Luckily, I decided to not die and I decided to live in my truth because you don't know, have a lot to live for. I won't really know what's out there yet. And I was really eager to find out, like, what well, is this life going to bring me, you know, besides suffering? Because we know that's going to happen for a fact. At least I had an idea from all these queer movies uh, that came out during the, that time I was growing up that involved so many queer people getting beat up. And if they weren't getting beat up, they were dying for some other straight person's character development. I was like, okay, so being gay is gonna bring suffering and it really doesn't matter if I like play it straight or play it gay, like I'm gonna be suffering either way. So why don't I just like live in my So I did. And I permed my hair without my parents' permission, started wearing colorful clothing, started wearing makeup in an emo kind of way to kind of like get away with it. In that whole year, Throughout 10th grade, I started really experimenting with my style, my hair, my clothes, everything. I just started doing everything that I really wanted to do. This is Born This Way Concealer, multi-use sculpting concealer in the color Caramel. Put this on all the places I really want to brighten. You don't really need to put on this much concealer. This is just my personal preference again. But well, um, yeah, I don't even put any on my chin anymore. I just use the leftover for my upper lip. And when I'm gonna go ultra bright underneath the eye, I just put just a little bit. 11th grade, I feel like I finally felt comfortable enough to start experimenting with dresses and heels. One of my best friends helped me with the clothes. She always had like huge amount of clothes, like of trash bags full of clothes that she would give me. Hey Jamila, if you watch it, I see you, love you. So she was a really, really, really big part, integral part of my journey because without her, I don't think I would have had a lot of anything. I was living my truth, but I was also just like, I'm minding my own business, please don't attack me. Like I really don't care about the rest of y'all, like just leave me the <laughs> alone type energy. This was my lane and I was staying in it and I really wasn't trying to bother nobody. Of course, that didn't stop anybody else from swerving into my <laughs> lane and not minding their own business, especially in the boys' locker room. And then when I would get home, that's when I would rant about my day on YouTube and reach out to people who were like-minded because I didn't really have any other or gender non-conforming people at the time to relate to. I had a few, but I wasn't really as close with them. It was a little isolating at times. That suffering just popped in. I was like, oh, hey girl, I know you, how you doing? Suffering was like, hey girl, it's been a long time. How are you? This is the living life. And I was like, it's going good. And she's like, I know, that's why I'm here to fuck your sh up. So I'm using my bright white illuminizer. And if you put it on underneath your foundation and all that other stuff, I'm putting it on top of my foundation. It looks so good on camera. It just looks like dewy skin and it really catches the light as you guys can see. Okay, let's try this big teardrop girl with the concealer. Not bad. That's what I was saying. I really started to feel myself when I was in senior year. I mean, kind of, not really. The fake it till you make it was fully integrated into my survival instincts, but I wasn't gonna let anybody else know that. So I was just running around to my sh <laughs> dancing circles at school dance events, creating a reputation that preceded myself. I made sure the girls knew that I was excellent. Even though I might've <laughs> looked ugly, you knew who I was. Even if you didn't know who I was, you saw me saw me walking around, you knew who I was. So don't play. Yeah, what was that other mo? Oh yeah, femininity. Senior year, I was kind of still feeling my shit. I had a better sense of makeup and like what I liked and like what I liked from the scene, kid era, what fit me. I was learning the tricks. Not as fast as I would like to, because beauty gurus weren't really a thing back then. They let me wear the dress in the senior photo too, because I know a lot of other queer people at my school, um, mostly the girls who wanted to wear tuxes weren't allowed to wear tuxes. Like they made them wear the dress, little, I don't know what you want to call that, the frock. And they were really not happy about that. They said, bitch, they let you wear the 
and dress I was just like yeah I guess I was cute or whatever today and they just handed it to me they just gave me the frock and I was just like oh so that was a very nice day <laughs> It really was. These are my new favorite cream blushes. They are very sheer to buildable coverage. So this one in particular is really pigmented, so you have to be careful with her. You kind of have to go in if you're using a brush like a few times to really pick up that pigment. Yeah, that's still sheer. <laughs> so you really won't have to worry about overdoing it with this. But I would still say be careful, especially if you're lighter skinned, because this deep color is definitely gonna be like bam in your face. So I'm putting this higher up on my cheekbone. Blush placement is extremely important because if you put it too low, you're gonna make your whole face zoom drop. So you wanna put it really high up. I put it on the same place where I put my highlight. And I do a little on my nose for that cute factor. Now I'm gonna take the Fit Me Maybelline Powder in the color 35, put a little bit into the top. I should have used this side earlier for blending. I really love this pointed, like how sharp it is, because it's really getting in there into those crevices when I need it to. That is so nice. So after high school, I knew what path I was on. I knew I liked wearing feminine clothing. I also wasn't as hyper aware anymore since I didn't have to go to school every day and worry about if what I was wearing was dress code. I mean, I barely cared when I was in school. I was very <laughs> establishment. Now that I was out of it, I was like, oh yeah, bro, we're gonna live our full fantasy. Like, I do not give a shit. <laughs> Me and my best friend, we just ran wild. We conquered our Las Vegas local Smith's grocery store, having parties. We was just living our lives. I'm just cutting the cheek right here. That harsh line is gonna be blended out over time. And that cut cheek situation really helps. So now to blend everything else together, I'm going to be using the Midnight Face Palette from Midas Cosmetics and Neon Anyways Club. This is all the colors in the palette. We've got blush, we've got bronzer, we've got contour, and we've got highlight. I personally love these two colors a lot. Um, this blush is probably like the perfect blush for, I mean, any occasion, honestly. Like, if this is the natural dark skin base palette. I need y'all to get into this, like, a step. So first, I'm gonna take the bronzer color because the contour color is a contour and warm up the skin. I kind of use this as a contour anyway because it's deeper than my skin tone. Let's just do a tap. That was probably too much of contour. So since I'm still a little bit aware of my chin chin chin, I just like to go over it just a little bit and then I go back over here for that contour and that in, blend that out. Try not to blend it too far down. Actually, that's a lie. I'll blend it all the way down to my jowls sometimes because I have this box around my mouth. Not to call attention to it or anything. Forget I said that. She be out here. And I'm just like, girl, shut up. Shut up. Point Made Busty Brown 24 Hour Gel Eyeliner Pencil. Ooh, this is on here tight. But this is one of those um, plastic pencil brushes. I wonder if this is supposed to be like more eco-friendly or something so that way they don't cut down trees. So let's see what she does. I wanna see how brown it is and it's looking pretty brown. Oh yeah, this is the fave already. I love a brown eyebrow moment. So as you can see, I just drew it straight and a little bit upwards. This gives me a natural facelift. This is my trick. Especially if I don't feel like wearing a lot of eye makeup. Get it so we, Okay, I've got my Avance brown eyeliner pencil. This is from Make Sobi. It's a Japanese makeup store here in Los Angeles. Like, I don't particularly like to spend a lot of money on eyeliner just for the simple fact that I feel like it runs out really quickly. I use it the most. You just don't want to pay $20 a pop every time I want to buy an eyeliner. You know what I'm saying? I'd rather pay 10 A lot of those kinds of eyeliners are perfectly good eyeliners. You will find eyeliners that are like 10 bucks too. So sometimes you'll find 20 Sometimes you'll find 2 15 13 Can people stop blowing shit for like a day? Now that my brow hairs are confidently filled out. I am going to go back into my midnight palette into the bronzer color. I'm just gonna take a tap of that and just blend that into my new brow hairs. Actually, I will take a tap of the contour, just a tap. As you can see, that is dark. And so I won't really change the shape of my nose as much like accentuate the nose bridge and like helps pronounce the bold. 
of my nose. Now we're heading to the fun part, eyeshadow. So I'm gonna be taking a little bit of P. Louise base just to shape the underbrow and create a nice base for the eyeshadow that we're gonna be wearing today. And then blend it with my finger. I can also use this trick to cover up brow hairs. Although I don't really cover the texture up that well, it does hide them from a distance. So my thing is, if I can't see it, then it ain't there. Unless I'm on a competition show or some sh which probably will never happen. Girl, what the f Okay, I don't know if somebody's popping out fireworks or what the f ever, but like, bitch, please do it another time. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this onto my eyelid. By a little bit, I mean a lot. Blending my beauty blender. All my shadows came perfectly fine. I hope somebody's doing fireworks. I do not need somebody blowing up. So we have some beautiful colors in this palette. Ooh, uh, pretty. Let's go ahead and do the top of my game. It's not even showing up. It's really light, which is good. And it's like really nice actually. That's like a perfect, at least with this white base, is a very perfect contour shade. Um, I've had enough of that color. I'm gonna go into suede. But I haven't done bronze smoking eye forever. I didn't even see soft serve because of this little stamp right here. That is a really pretty color. I'm gonna use soft serve. Ooh, that's a little dark for the underbrow. I'm gonna use soft serve in the crease as well. These blend so well, like I legit can't even see. It also could be my lighting. But these are blending so nicely. Let's try booked. This should be a little bit deeper. And now I'm just gonna go in with brownie. The girl of the season. I'm just gonna go all over right here, here. I'm gonna do a little halo eye. You can definitely get away with a halo eye, especially one that's soft like this in the day. Especially if you dark brown chocolate like me, it's probably just gonna look like your irises just got a nice little cue to it. They're gonna be like, oh my God, did you get work done? And you're gonna be like, no, girl. My eyelids just a little greasy today, that's all. And I've been getting sleep. You know, just light stay face. And do a little brown on the outer view, like the tiniest amount. Don't bring it all the way in, I say just bring it just there. Damn, I completely neglected Mango, but that's fine, because she was not cute to me. But actually, let's use it. Maybe I can use this as like an underbrow. And lo and behold, she looks kind of nice. Just a little bit, you know, just to blend in and set that base color that I used before. Now I'm gonna go in with Walnut Strut. Let's try it with the brush first. I normally like to use my fingers for shimmer just because it picks up the product better and blends it out smoother and more vibrant. But since I want a little bit of control, let's go in with the brush. Oh, and it's already just jam-packed with beauty. Here's a little trick I like to do with my halo eye. I don't put the color just like straight up. I'll angle it out. I'll start in like the innermost corner and then I'll blend through the center of the eye. And then as I'm going out, I will almost like a cat eye in the middle of the eye. So you get this kind of, and it also adds to the overall face snatchage. This is a really pretty color too. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go into Title Holder, which is a beautiful gold. Highlight it in the corner, highlight it in the corner, highlight it, highlight it, highlight it, highlight it in the corner. And this is nice. You don't have to highlight in the inner corner with a shimmer. It's just my personal preference. I love to have a nice shimmery waterline, so I'll bring it down. Sometimes even getting it in my eye. Don't do that at home, kids. I'm gonna go back into the busty brown. I'm gonna use this on my waterline. Like, it's a nice, pretty, warm brown. Not like a really harsh gray brown or dark, dark brown. Like, it's the perfect amount of chocolatey for me. And being someone who is darker skinned, that's really important to me. So I'm already loving that product. I'm probably gonna use that for eyes, lips, face, brows, everything. I'm gonna get a lot of use out of that pencil. Definitely don't wanna neglect the liquid shadows, now do we? Pea House, that was a really cute color. There's Let's Pump, which is like a really light silver. There is Continental, which is 
almost kind of looks like a green gold, but I think it's just a gold. And then there's everything and more. And then we have like a glittery black. It looks really beautiful. I'm gonna use everything and more. I'm gonna put a little bit on my hands. And then I'm gonna take a brush, pat it in there. Oh my God, that actually looks a lot better than I expected it. So I'm just a little scared. I'm just patting this all over the highlighted part of my lid. So this stuff kind of dries fast and it is a little chunky. Beware. For the inner corner and slash under eye, I'm going to be using a pea house. I'm gonna use this paintbrush <laughs> and put this so a little close to the waterline. Concentrate it and blend it down a little bit because my eyes are a little, I don't want to say bulbous, but yeah, they're kind of bulbous. They kind of come out at you. So I put a little bit under that under eye just to, I guess, accentuate my egg yo sal, which is a term for the under eye puffiness that you get. It's cute flesh, literally, in Korean. So there's a reason to stop hating your under eye bags. You can literally be decorating them as we speak. One person's under eye bags is another person's under eye treasure. Let's try the Point Made Eyeliner. I really should be going in with like the soft brown, but I just want to think, guys. This isn't one of those shaky things. It's a felt tip pen. Ooh, this is already nice. It's such a fine felt tip point. Girl, I feel like I could do anything. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of mascara. This is the Lash Freak from Urban Decay. The mascara is nice and I really like the brush. But I mean, at the end of the day, mascara is mascara. Like, I don't really see a difference in a lot of products, but in this, definitely stood out to me, at least just from the brush alone. The formula of the mascara is really nice. It can get really clumpy sometimes. Like, the brush is like a completely coated mess. But I don't necessarily mind that because it really makes my lashes stick together like in such a beautiful way and since this has like a spiky ball at the end of it you can easily reach bottom lashes if you choose to hit them so we're pretty much done with all of patrick's products so far i really like it i mean i expect nothing but excellence from patrick star at this point because that's what we've been getting i like that it gives this barely there feeling normally i wouldn't like that in a palette but i can tell that this is supposed to be a more natural looking palette the fact that the colors blend right into my skin, but are still pigmented, is like, thanks Pat for sending over that stuff because I'm definitely gonna be utilizing it, especially this girl. Okay, so let's just get started with her. I'm gonna be using her as a lip liner. So inspired by this, I'm just like, wow. So I'm just using a little bit of that on the bottom lip, go a little ham. I'm gonna do the same on the top. Adding to blend. And to finish, I'm going to use Fenty's Unveil. This stinks though, this stuff stinks. I'm going to go in with the Midnight Face Palette again, just use a little bit of blush. But we lost her a little bit with the powder. This highlight is a little bit dark for me, but let's go ahead and give it a go. I'm just going to use like a tiny amount. Some of this glitter is like falling out onto my face a little bit. Extra things you can do to feminize your face. I wear contacts. When you have a different eye color, it really does change the way a makeup look looks. My favorite contacts to wear are green though. Something else extra you can do is get a wig. It can be synthetic. There are a bunch of synthetic wigs out there that look amazing. And a lot of them aren't gonna cost you more than 30 bucks. I mean, if they do, they're probably like long wigs. And they're lace fronts too. So just keep that in mind. Although the lace might be a little hard and uncomfortable, it'll get you where you need to go. Something else you can do to feminize your face is apps. So my favorite app to use for chin shrinking and eye shifting and all that other stuff is Snow App. I know a lot of people already know about this app already, so it's nothing new. Facetune costs money now, and I'm not paying. I'm just not paying for an app. You can put makeup filters on your face. I don't really like to mess with those. And if you're dark skinned like me and want to avoid the skin lightening filters on this app, because this is an Asian app, you know, skin lightening is like a huge thing over there. So I don't use any filters on here. I just stay with the original filter. You can also go into the beauty and like change the size of your head. 
So I have a small, tiny head now. That is crazy. Anybody who has body dysmorphia or like anything like that, I would, I would not recommend using this app. Like, but if you want to fulfill the fantasy, if just for a moment, then Snow app is for you. Be careful not to get too caught up in the fantasy that you might want to turn into reality. If you want to turn it into reality, girl, that's your business. And you've got the money for that, girl, that's your business. But um, I really don't think I really need to shrink my head, so I leave that alone. But I do have the pore up to like 40 or 50%. I could probably take that down a little bit because my skin looking bomb right now. I don't have anything on Brighton. I don't have, ooh, I do have a nose bridge narrower, which, oh, I guess it was shrinking my nose. Turn that off, you don't really need that. I have a sculptor for my chin. It actually kind of slims my neck too. Here's the chin. This is like taking down my chin. I don't want to take too much off because I, I need something, a little something. Jaw. So this helps create a sharper jaw for you. This gets rid of my square mouth, like my jowls. And then I have my eyelids. So this is without the um, eyelid thing, but I have my eyelids to be cat eye, like all the way. So it turns them ever so slightly inward. So it really accentuates all of that other cat eye stuff that I did. But I, have, I turned that shit all the way up because that's what it looks like. Boom. Under eye circles are blurred. I can probably turn that down a little bit. Everything else is pretty much the same. I'll go ahead, take a picture. So sometimes I don't really like going into lower angles because it accentuates my second chin, but um, I'm starting to get used to it. It's feeling the fantasy, feeling the beauty, don't really care, you know, so I'll just go down there. And also because you can see up my nostrils, not really a fan of that, but comes with the package. I also just like how dominant it makes me feel. I'm like, yeah, I'm feminine, yeah, you're small and you're short, meaningless. Yeah, I have big boobs. Experiment with your angles, your lighting, with the zoom. You're not a typical person who likes to shoot their photos and warp and mash their face. Don't do it. It's not something that you have to do. I just like doing it because it's something that I want to do. Why not? The tools are out there for me. I'm also wearing like two layers of makeup anyway. So I don't see the issue with adding a little bit of extra something right here and something right here and pulling up right here because I'm already doing that right now. I'm doing that with this makeup. To me, a little bit of extra Photoshop. I ain't gonna hurt nobody. I ain't gonna hurt nobody. If you guys wanna see Patrick's video about One Size Beauty, the links will be down below in the description and the links to everything else will be in the description if you wanna see me on Instagram, Twitter, or those are the only places I really go actually. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and until next time, it's been me, Miles J, and I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye!